Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Okay, so we are going to discuss on another chapter of international business. Okay, so kita akan lihat. Sekejap ya. Alright, so kita akan tengok beberapa objektif lah. Oh, but... Okay, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, madam. Alright. So, four objective, how firms analyze foreign markets, outline the process by which firms choose their mode of entry into a foreign market, describe forms of exporting and the types of intermediaries available to assist firms in exporting their goods. Okay, and the last one will be the basic issues in international licensing and discuss advantages and disadvantages of licensing. Okay. So, ada lagi kat belakang tu, okay. Uh, this is what, okay, new franchising, lepas tu contract manufacturing, management contract, turn key, apa tu greenfield, apa itu acquisition forms and foreign direct investment, okay. So, bila kita bercakap mengenai foreign market ni, kita akan tengok daripada tiga kategori ni. Okay. So, dia mesti apa-apa uh, strategi pun dalam international business, dia akan ada fundamental goals dia. Sebab dia nak expandkan market share dia. Dia nak tingkatkan revenue dia. Dia nak naikkan profit dia lagi. So, bila dia orang nak capai benda-benda yang saya sebut tadi tu, nak expanding market share, nak tingkatkan orang kata revenue, nak naikkan profit tu, they must look on their goals by how actually dia orang enter the market. Okay. Uh, so, bila dia orang enter the market ataupun how they introduce the new products into markets where They already have a presence. Contoh kita nak tengok lah Samsung kan bila dia nak buat promo pasal flip. Okay. So cuba tengok macam mana sebab market tu dia orang dah ada tapi macam mana dia orang nak uh, overcome ataupun in a very basic word uh, zaman sekarang ni how they want to silang dia orang punya own product juga. Sebab dia nak fokus pada produk yang baru ni. Okay. Kalau tidak kenapa orang tertunggu-tunggu IP13 uh, ni. Okay, so in order to increase uh, the share, the revenue, the profits, dia kena follow three steps ni. Okay, yang you nampak dekat depan mata you sekarang ni. Assessment, uh, assessment apa? Assess the alternative markets. Macam mana dia nak pergi market yang lain. Okay, lepas tu dia kena evaluate the respective cost. Maknanya apa cost yang terlibat, apa benefit yang ada, apa apa risiko bila nak masuk market yang diorang pilih ni. And uh, kalau katakan dia nak masuk lima, tiga, empat market terus boleh tapi diorang kena buat evaluation cost benefit and risk of each one of the market. And lepas tu barulah pergi kepada selection those with the most potential for entry or expansion. So dekat sini bila you nak tengok contoh-contoh yang saya nak cakap ni kalau sebelum they decided um, saya ambil example um, uh, they decided to to open up a Legoland here. How exactly dia orang buat keputusan tu? Ah, ataupun sebelum Legoland dia orang nak buat JPO sini, nak buat premium outlet kat sini. Kenapa dia orang buat keputusan di Johor? Kenapa buat Legoland di Johor? Ha, itu semua benda-benda yang diorang dah tengok foreign market analysis ni. They have been kata following all these three steps. Barulah diorang ambil most potential for entry ataupun expansion. Okay. Right. So bila kita nak tengok ni analyze new market opportunities ni. Dia akan antara questions will be asked ialah how large is the market today? How fast is the market growing? Okay, kalau nak tengok how large is the market today, siapa yang akan gunakan iPhone ni? Siapa yang akan gunakan Samsung? Ataupun siapa je yang nak pergi Legoland? Ada ke tidak? How fast is the market growing? So, the same question sebenarnya, you dah belajar pun marketing, betul tak? 
Okay so sama je tapi bila melibatkan international business ni dia ada benda-benda yang you kena tengok which product segments are likely for you to expand. And adakah melibatkan contract? Contohnya lah kalau you tengok KFC. Ada certain product that when you go overseas you won't see the same product in overseas. Okay. So which product segments would we, would we like to target? Okay. What are the key drivers of success in this market? Do these key drivers match our capabilities? What future changes will occur in this market? And bila dah tengok semua benda tu, potential tu, baru you tengok levels of competition. Walaupun sebenarnya bila you marketkan dalam uh, domestik pun you kena tengok benda ni Tapi bila you nak pergi overseas ni lagi lah you nak kena tengok Sebab you have to understand that if you think that your provide uh, your product is unique Your service is unique ramai lagi yang akan kata macam tu Sebab tu saya suka kalau awak tengok sebab you pun tengah buat ENT kan Pergi tengok Shark Tank dekat YouTube tu ada okay So who's gaining market share? Are foreign firms operating successfully in the market? Kalau you tengok KFC Asia, KFC Asia eh maknanya um, siapa owner KFC tu? Johor Kok um, share dalam KFC Asia adalah 60% ke 70%? 60% more than 50% yang pastinya. So maknanya Johor Kok ada, uh, ada hak untuk buat all the market potential of KFC punya product. Ha, itu contohlah saya nak bagi kan supaya awak lebih faham. Okey itu itu dari segi market potential and levels of competition. Kita nak tengok sekarang dari segi legal and political environment dan juga social cultural influences. Okey so ini adalah questions yang bila you nak masuk new market tu je you kena tanya. So sama juga bila you nak jawab untuk ENT pun lebih kurang sama. So bila tengok legal and political environment, does the government welcome or discourage foreign investment? Okay sebab tu uh, you kena tengok policy government bila kita nak buat legal land kat sini adakah boleh ke tidak? Okay adakah kita boleh boleh orang kata um, Bina Legoland, Legoland dengan hotel dia sekali. How exactly dia nak buat? Macam mana dia nak sesuaikan? Macam mana government nak nak ambil orang um kata nak libatkan trade barriers dalam ni? Okay. So does the government favor local firms? Okay. Macam mana dia nak libatkan local firms dalam pembinaan Legoland ni? Sebab tu bila Legoland tu ada di Nusa Jaya, di Johor ni secara tak langsungnya kalau you tengok tempat tu growing. Okay, sebab tu kita pun sebenarnya UITM ni pun filosofi awal UITM, okay. Memang kita buat dekat kawasan-kawasan yang perlukan pembangunan dan orang kata uh, basically dekat kawasan Felda lah kalau you tengokkan asalnya. Okay, sekarang dia baru beza sikit. Okay, so ada uh, strong ties between existing political and business elites. Ha, ni sebab apa? Sebab political dengan bisnes ni selalunya mana-mana negara yang membangun ni memang ada masalah sikit. Is corruption pervasive? Kita pun tengah ongoing cerita yang tak pasti bila endingnya. How reliable is the rule of law? How strong is IP protection? Ha, ni buat produk sikit je kena tiru. Buat produk sikit je kena tiru. Are you guys still there? Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Alright, okay. Kok saya shock sendiri ni kan sebab tak, saya tak buka kamera tak nampak pun. So I'm so sorry. So is our product kalau orang tengok daripada socio-cultural influences pula. Okay, kita nak tengok produk kita ni compatible tak dengan local culture. I think baru-baru ni kalau you perasan, okay, Libres, Libres eh. How they put, pronounce the word Libres. Libres ada buat uh, design packaging yang baru yang mendatangkan orang kata um, trigger to all over people okay so okay you boleh tengok je what kind of issues is that okay so is our product compatible with the local culture that will answer whether the questions I'm not saying I'm okay with that situation and I'm not okay so kita nak tengok sebagai contoh product compatible with the local culture okay Ataupun kita tak tengok pun ada iklan arak Okay dipaparkan secara besar-besaran Di dalam media kita Okay kena faham Okay religion punya basis How different is this market from others that we have entered 
what motivates workers in the culture do consumers seek out uh, seek out foreign brands Okay, kita dah ada local barang kita tapi still nak juga ambil barang. Contohlah ada handbag yang orang um, kata buatan uh, Malaysian lagi better than buatan luar negara. However, people still looking for, for foreign brands. How educated is the population? Is the population yang or old, urban or ruler? Semua benda ni you akan tengok sebelum nak masuk new market. Okay. Right. So, bila kita okay, sekejap ya. So bila kita nak assess alternative foreign markets ni kita akan tengok assessment ni kita akan tengok based on these four criteria lah. Okay. Uh, ataupun kita panggil factors. Okay. Right. Bila kita uh, discuss on market potential. So kita kena tengok data. Sebab tu bila you nak buat business ni. Okay. You kena tengok data about population. Capital GDP dia. Ini kalau kata international business lah. Public infrastructure. Did public infra infrastructure ni permit firms to screen various foreign markets and the decisions sebenarnya akan draw uh, all the attention bila kita dah boleh position our product sendiri. Okay. So another factor ialah level of competition. Okay, so kita nak tengok juga, kita nak identify juga berapa banyak sebenarnya firms yang competing dengan uh, produk you sendiri. Macam mana orang kata reliable-nya market share dia orang uh, dalam pasaran tu. Okay, their pricing and distribution, uh, distribution strategies, their relative strengths and weaknesses. It must, orang kata, uh, kita nak tengok yang some, at least kita sebenarnya lebih sikit ataupun at par with, with them bila kita nak masuk entry the market. Okay. So and kita pun kena tahu bila kita nak masuk orang kata foreign market ni general legal and political environment. Okay. Sebab kita kena faham dadah memang tak boleh masuk dalam Malaysia tapi certain countries allows to export marijuana. Marijuana kan. A firm may choose maknanya nak forego uh, the exporting sebab based on the high tariff ataupun dia boleh uh, negotiate dengan negara yang dia nak orang kata nak access uh, market ni dengan minta fewer barriers. Okay sebab benda-benda ni akan melibatkan government stability juga. Government tak kukuh orang pun tak nak masuk buat dengan kita. Okay so bila Malaysia tahap COVID dia dah jatuh Jatuh. Eh nak jatuh lah maknanya dah turun Barulah ha, negara lain pun open up dia um, kata airways Oh airways lah kan Jalan udara dia orang tu ke Malaysia Okay right So sa dia kena faham juga bila countries yang tak uh, keen on um, kata political stability ni Akan kekurangan um, kata pilihan untuk dijadikan foreign market Okay, managers also kena tengok bila ataupun you terlibat dengan inter international business ni you kena tengok juga sama ada um, uh, influences on social cultural ni. Okay, the needs and preferences of host country. Kalau you tengok McDonald, McDonald ada nasi lemak. Betul sekarang. Tapi kalau you tengok kat luar negara tak ada. Okay, right. Kalau tengok kat luar negara memang tak ada. Sebab ia memang khas untuk kita. Okay. Right. So kita dah nak moving on. Uh, cost, benefits and risk. Okay. I am not saying about international business sahaja. Any business pun yang melibatkan orang kata isu. Okay. Uh, cost perlu melihat apa sahaja yang terlibat. So bila bila kita nak cakap a uh, risk ini kita ada orang um, kata direct cost dengan opportunity cost. Okay. So direct cost ya uh, incurred bila firm enters a new foreign market. So, so, maknanya bila nak setting up business operation, transfer manager, shipping all the equipment and merchandise, ah uh, itu direct cost. Tapi ada juga yang kita panggil opportunity cost. Uh, ini bila bi, opportunity cost ni jadi bila firm ni dia limited resources. So entering the market boleh menyebabkan dia delay. 
So the profits that will be earned in the second market will be the opportunity cost. So, faham tak? Ada soalan tak? Ada yang nak tanya ke? Tak ada ya? Eh? Saya boleh teruskan? Boleh madam. Okay. So uh, the organization has for kiranya delete the opportunity to earn those profit by choosing to enter another market first. Uh, harap awak fahamlah opportunity cost ni. Dia macam ni. Sebab uh, firm tu limited resources. Dia nak masuk market yang ini. So bila dia ma nak masuk market yang ini. Dia kena pergi market yang lain sebab limited resources. So dia masuk dulu enter another market first then baru dia akan dia ambil opportunity dari segi aku masuk ni aku dapat duit kat sini then aku boleh masuk market yang aku nak tu. Okay. So itu pun cost juga walaupun sebenarnya kita panggil wah bijak dia ni dia dia nak masuk market tu duit tak cukup tapi dia masuk juga eh, uh, dia, dia masuk kemudian. Okay. Some sorts like that lah. Okay. Uh, sebab tu bila kita nak buat business ni kena pandai cari Ha, cari orang kata peluang. Okay. So bila nak masuk new market ni kena tengok benefit. Kalau tak ada benefit tak payahlah masuk new market. Faham tak? Okay. So these are the most orang kata obvious potential benefit bila you nak masuk new market. Of course bila you nak masuk new market tu contohnya orang nak bawa masuk durian kat luar negara tu. Okay. Kena ada sebab. Ah, okay. Expected sales and profits mesti naik. Ah, cost mesti rendah. Okay, bila nak market orang kata um, maknanya bila for closing of market ni, bila competitor tak dapat uh, tak dapat nak earn profit because kita masuk market tu. And of course bila kita dapat Uh, competitive advantage pula dengan keadaan kita masuk tu kita dah limitkan kita punya competitor untuk dapat profit dan competitive advantage bila kita sendiri heading of the market sebab kita kita dapat kelebihan dengan produk kita sendiri. Okay so assess new technology dan of course synergy lah dengan semua operation yang ada. So kalau tak ada benefit buat uh, enter new market why you want to enter the market. Okay right. So agak clear di situ lah kan. So this one pula um, antara risk. Okay. I think kita dah belajar exchange rate kan. Okay. Fluctuation. Hari ni, ah, ni nak tanya soalan cepu mas. Hari ni uh, USD berapa eh? Hari ini 14 Disember hari Selasa. Can anyone give me, I give you one minute to find. Tak tinggi dua puluh tiga sen. Boleh tengok uh, uh, seminggu punya transaction tak? Paling tinggi bila? Tengok analitik dia. Bila yang paling tinggi? Untuk seminggu yang medium. Ha ah. Uh -uh. Rasanya hari ni. Hari ni. Sebelum ni berapa? RM4.21. So hari ni hari Selasa RM4.23. So benda yang sama you akan tengok hari Khamis ni dia jatuh berapa sen? Okay? Ha ah, so Tak payahlah saya nak tanya kan. Nanti you tengok sendiri sama ada turun atau naik. Okay hari, hari ni selasa nanti you tengok hari Kamis. So bila kita nak tengok orang kata risk pun kita akan tengok the exchange rate fluctuation, uh, the complexity of operating in new market ni, uh, apakah orang kata direct financial losses resulting orang kata daripada assessment of market potential and then kita nak tengok juga bila political risk ya yeah, kita main gamble je nak buat orang kata business kita kat negara tu okay suddenly ha, dah tak boleh nak kata apa tiba-tiba perang lah terrorism lah ha, dah tak boleh nak buat apa loss okay complete loss total loss orang kata okay so ini kenapa dia kecil ni 
Nampak aku? Kecil-kecil je. Hmm. Okay. So ini yang you nak kena faham ni. Ha. Okay. So which mode yang you nak masuk ni? Ha. Bila kita dah ada decision factors, you boleh tengok dekat sini decision factors you. Okay. Ha. Kita ada beberapa decision factors kita bila kita nak masuk. Ada ownership advantages, ada location advantages, ada internalization advantages and of course ada other factors need for control, resource availability uh, dengan global strategy. So bila kita nak tengok ni uh, kita kena tengok one of the theory yang said that okay uh, Dunning Eclectic Theory. Uh, dia provide useful insights bila kita nak ambil factors yang nak choose. So kita akan tengok either home country production, exporting, host, contract, host country production, infirm owned factories, FDI and joint ventures or host country production performed by others licensing, franchising and contract manufacturing. So dia bila kita kata dunning factors ni, ni yang you tengok kat tepi ni ni. Okay, decision factors ni. Okay, right. Mode of entry ni based on decision factors kita. Okay. Ha, dia dah tulis balik dah tu. Okay. So kita pula nak pilih yang mana. Sekejap ya. Tak mahu kerap pula. Okay. Ni. Eh. Dia terus. Okay. So ini ialah decision factors yang daripada sini ni. Ha. Okay. Ha, ni tak mahu gerak tak apalah. Okay so ini decision factor so kita nak tengok one by one. Okay so ownership advantage, ownership advantages, resources owned by a firm that give a competitive advantages over its industry rivals. Ownership advantages orang kata dia boleh ada power bargaining. They can influence the outcome of entry mode negotiation. So dia ada resources kena faham. So kalau location advantages dia akan affect the desirability of host, contract, host country production relative to home country production. So kalau katakan home country production to be more desirable than host country production. So the firm will choose to enter the host country market via exporting. Okay. Right? Maknanya bila production dekat tempat sendiri lagi bagus, dia tak payahlah pergi buat kat luar. Maknanya dia tak payah buat FDI. Okay. So dia buat dan dia baru pergi export. Okay. Tapi kalau host country production more desirable, dia mungkin ha, kena ambil facilities dekat foreign market tu lah and license the use of its technology and brand names to existing. Kalau you tengok dekat pasir gudang ni, banyak Location advantages punya entry uh, decision factors. Okay. Contohnya you dapat tengok Titan lah. You dapat tengok Penek lah. You dapat tengok Hitachi so called dah tukar nama sekarang lah. Okay. Sebab kita ni lebih ada power yang menyebabkan home country mereka uh, buat investment dekat kita. Okay. Kalau internalization advantages pula, make it desirable for a firm to produce a good or service itself rather than contracting with another firm to produce it. Okay, transaction costs are critical to the decision. Okay, so if such costs are high, the firm may rely on FDI and joint ventures as entry mode. Okay, faham tak setakat ni? Ini decision factors ya. Eh? Awak kena faham. Kita nak masuk market orang, kita kena buat beberapa decision. Dan kita nak kena tengok sama ada ownership ke, location ke, internalization ke ataupun ada factors uh, affected juga. So kalau katakanlah firm tu dia consider dia nak need the control and availability of the resources. So untuk reduce uh, that uncertainty, a firm may, orang kata 
uh, or prefer an initial entry mode that offers a high degree of control. Sebab dia nak control on the resources so dia kena pergi pada ownership advantages lah. However, if the capital and executive talent are in short supply, the firm may not be able to afford the large capital investment. So therefore, dia kena cari uh, entry mode yang very economic. Okay. So yang maknanya dia baik dia bagi license daripada dia pening kepala fikir macam-macam. Okay. Sekejap ya. Right. So uh, itu untuk choosing an entry mode. Sekejap. Susah sangatlah pula. Okay. So bila kita nak berkata mengenai when we want to discuss on exporting to foreign market. So primary advantage ialah kita akan tengok the uh, firm can control the financial exposure to the host country market or not. Okay. So kita ni home. Kita nak masuk foreign market. So can we control the financial exposure to the host country? So kalau the firm choose to hire a host country firm to distribute the product. Okay. So its financial exposure may be limited to start up costs for marketing research. Selecting a local um, kata distributor and per advertising. Uh, and the firm choose to distribute its product itself. Ini tadi kalau dia bagi host country. Kalau dia sendiri nak ni. Mm, financial exposure may rise substantially since it will have to equip and operate distribution centers. Dia hire employees dan market product. Ada different lah good and kata ni. Sama juga bila kita nak buat business kat sini juga. So kita nak ambil orang kita sendiri ke baru je you nak buat ENT business plan. Tapi you baru je nak buat business plan. Tapi ya hajat di hati nak hire nak ambil orang gaji 10 orang. Ah Tak sesuai lah kan. Second, bila kita nak exporting, kita juga akan menyebabkan firm tu uh, masuk market gradually. Uh, so, bila kita buat macam tu, kita allow to access local conditions and kita akan fine tune dengan produk dia, produk kita sendiri untuk meet the host country punya uh, consumer punya keperluan. Uh, the needs of host country punya consumer. Okay. So if the export our product to well receive the foreign consumers who may use this experience as a basis. Kalau you tengok duck sendiri pun bila duck dia produce dia punya orang kata dia give FDI dia kilang dia dari China. Okay. So bila produk dia nak sampai kat all over Malaysia, uh, all over the world ni produk dia senang je semua orang nak pakai. Sama juga dengan Bokita. Okay. So those orang kata kind of orang kata bila you nak choose the market tu sebenarnya. So exporting to foreign markets kita akan tengok by two uh, motivation sama ada proactive which uh, apa tu proactive? Proactive ialah you kena ingat bila pro ni dia pull a firm into foreign markets. Maknanya dia, dia uh, market tu sendiri tarik produk kita masuk sebab kita ada ada sebab boleh masuk. Kalau reaktif ni pula kita push firm tu untuk foreign market. Because opportunities are decreasing in the domestic market. Anaknya sebab produk kita ni dah tak dapat tempat di domestic market, kita kena masuk foreign market tu. Right? Uh, so kena faham kat mana sebenarnya produk-produk mana sebenarnya yang pilih-pilih. Awak kena cari contohlah bagi yang nak faham. Ada je sebenarnya. Ada produk-produk Malaysia sendiri tapi kita tak nampak dekat Malaysia. Nampak dekat luar. Eh? Ada produk yang popular kat Malaysia tapi tak pernah nampak kat luar negara. Tapi produk tu bangun sangat. There's a reason behind this. So you kena tengok whether the product is actually proactive motivation ataupun reactive motivation. Okay. Ha, ini dia lah. Ha, ini soalan kalau dulu soalan ada keluar ni. Okay. So ini direct exporting. Eh mana benda direct? Ni direct. Okay ini indirect exporting. Indirect exporting maksud dia ialah okay. Ha, you tengok gambar tu. 
take time to to digest the gambar. Right. So kalau you tengok itu, a firm may sell it product, okay, to a domestic customer. Ni indirect ya. Okay, so ataupun domestic wholesaler. A foreign firms, local subsidiary, or a foreign firm, okay, all of them which will export the product in either its original form or modified form. Okay, so in most cases, indirecting, exporting, contohlah company A ni, Okay, dia dapat ikan masin, dia jual je. Okay, pada wholesaler. So, company B ni, dia akan repackaging, dia akan rebranding. So, dia akan hantar kepada company C. Okay, so nama dah jadi lain. Okay, kalau dark dah jadi chicken dah, contohnya. Okay, right? Ha, tu contoh indirect exporting. Okay. Kalau direct exporting pula, apa bezanya? Terus dia, company A ni terus dia hantar kepada company C. Dia tak melibatkan siapa-siapa pun. Sells directly to the foreign customer. Initially, direct um, contact exporting ni menyebabkan uh, order tu jadi uh, tak keruan lah. Sebab kita terus direct kan? Kita tak libatkan. So, Uh, the firm exactly will learn how about uh, operating internationally lah. Kalau you tengok indirect tadi tu, dia melibatkan lagi satu company. Okay. So, dia je maksudnya. Ya. Yeah. Uh, yang direct ni kan. Contoh dekat company A tu dia dark. Dekat country tu, company C tu still dark lah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Dia, dia tak ada tukar-tukar. Okay. Uh, dia maintain dark and dark sebab dia nak control. Kebanyakan direct exporting ni dia nak ambil risk untuk buat. Ha, so dia akan lebih agresif lah bila nak masuk new market tu. Okay? Faham? Faham Ida. Okay. It, it can be juga sebenarnya nama kat sini pun tak payah tukar. Kalau katakan dekat sini pun tapi uh, biasanya lah Okay, indirect ni dia akan tukar sebab uh, kita tak tahu sebenarnya apa yang telah diperjanjikan dekat sini. Faham tak? The company A dengan company B ni what kind of agreement yang telah diorang buat untuk pastikan produk dia pergi company C. Kadang-kadang ada usahawan yang kena silent sebab agreement dia dah say so. You cannot reveal that this is your product blah blah blah. Uh, itu yang kita sekarang ni lah sekarang ni. Tapi kebanyakan usahawan sekarang ni dah pandai. Okay, so ada juga kata, uh, bahan parts in cars yang sebenarnya Malaysia yang hasilkan. dijual dekat company B dan company B yang akan hantarkan. Okay, right? So this is intra-corporate transfers. Ha, apa benda ni intra-corporate lah pula. Okay. So this is direct exporting yang only occurs through sales to customers located outside the firm's home country. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ni direct exporting. Salah. Okay. Right, betul lah. Occurs through sales customer located outside. Sekejap ya. Ah, Sorry. Intra-corporate transfer is the sale of goods by a firm in one country to an affiliated firm in another country. Such transfers are an important part of international trade. Hmm. Ha, so apa maksud affiliated company ni? Adakah dia kena-mengena ataupun tak kena-mengena? Awak tengok ni company A, dia ada affiliated company dan dia tetap jadi company A kat sini. Maknanya dekat sini apa? Madam kiranya dia own company itulah kan Madam? Cuba cuba cari jawapan dulu. Cawangan ni Madam. Ha. Cuba cuba cuba. Cuba cuba lagi cuba lagi. Tapi yang ada hantar chat tu tolong bagi tahu saya ya. Eh. Hmm. 
dia sama kat ni tapi apa ni Franchise? Ya kau franchise. Kita tak sampai franchise lagi. Dia own 50% of the ownership mana? Nak pergi faham senang je. Kalau ada satu company tapi dia ada bahagian dalam dua-dua company. So maksudnya company A dengan company A ni dua company berbeza tapi masih ada entity yang ke atas yang kawal dua company tu. Macam tu kami ada. Hampir lah. Hampir. Hampir. So dia sebenarnya company ni sama saja, Okay. So different tempat aja, Okay. Different tempat aja, Di different tempat dia. So ini mungkin uh, affiliated company yang diwujudkan supaya bila pergi negara ni senang sikit. So adalah sebab urusannya. Okay. Um, ada baik, ada lemahnya lah tapi yang saya nak minta ialah contoh intercorporate transfer ni. Dia melibatkan employee. Yang company-nya sama. Itu je. Anyone? Selain daripada tadi, saya tak kata yang tadi tu salah eh. Saya cuma. Macam cawangan ke Madam? Dia buka cawangan negara lain? Dia ada affiliated tengah-tengah. Haa. -tengah. Uh. Dia bukan branches. Ha, kita tak sampai lagi tu. So kita cuma reassign company tu worker dia ke tempat lain je. Sebenarnya sama je company. Faham tak? Ha, cumanya company kita ni beroperasi di di negara lain. Faham eh? Okay. Ini masih lagi forms of exporting. Okay. Maknanya dekat sini dia ada advantages lah. Dia control 100% of untung dia. Faham tak? Contohnya saya, saya buat produk. Okay. Ha, saya pun ada affiliated company dekat orang kata dekat, dekat Singapura. So apa saya buat bila saya nak pergi kat Singapura, saya pindah je. Saya transfer je. Uh, staff saya kat sini pergi kat company kat, dekat Singapura ni. Okay. Ha, itu cerita dia. Okay. Ambil masa ni kena cari example baru awak boleh faham. Takkan saya je nak bagi example. Saya dah bagi banyak example lah tu. Ha. So exporting to foreign market baru kita nak masuk additional. Ini tadi kalau awak tengok kita dah bincang daripada kita tengok gambar rajah. Ha. Ha. Exporting sahaja. Kita belum masuk licensing, belum masuk franchising yang awak sebut ni, belum masuk specialized mode. Okay, belum pergi sini semua. Bukan belum pergi FDI lagi. Baru export saja. Kita maksudkan export sahaja. Okay, so bila kita nak masuk export ni, kita ada additional consideration yang kita nak fikir bila kita nak cakap exporting. So kita kena tengok government policies lagi. Macam mana dia tengok pada tarif dia, marketing concerns dia. Adakah image, distribution, customer service macam contoh saya bagi tadi tu. Okay, Libras bila dia buat packaging dia. Okay. Uh, foreign goods dia ada certain product image yang kena ikut. Uh, dan produk domestik tak boleh follow. Sebab tu you tengok eh eh kenapa kereta ni dekat sini macam ni dekat Jepun lain. Ah uh, contohnya. Okay. So logistical consideration bila nak masuk Uh, untuk untuk bila nak buat decision untuk export ni Macam mana nak sampai, macam mana warehousing ha, Ini semua kelebihan you all ni Packaging, transporting and how you want to distribute the goods Okay uh, Dan apa inventory ataupun cost-cost uh, hidden yang ada Untuk firm tu dan juga customer Okay so sekarang kalau you perasan uh, Apa ni bila kita buat apa Apa uh, 
delivery package kan uh, Kadang-kadang boleh bayar kereta kita boleh hantar Tapi nanti posting tanggung sendiri oleh customer Maknanya sampai je JNT ataupun yang ini akan collect duit Daripada customer yang membeli So ini pun akan affect Alright, distribution issues macam mana nak sampai Produk tu sendiri bila dah pergi Pada factor exporting ni Okay, macam mana dia nak seek Ataupun cari local distributor dekat market tu ha, Semua benda ni nak kena tengok bila nak guna uh, Apa ni, uh, export punya modes of entry Okay, ini dia Ini yang saya sebut tadi ha, Government policies, marketing concern Logistical consideration and distribution issues Okay Right, ha, ni baru nak masuk licensing ha. Okay, license so Okay, bila kita nak cakap licensing ni Okay License so ni leases the right to use It's intellectual property, contohnya macam pattern, brand names or trademarks to another firm called the licensee and in return for a fee. Okay, you boleh tengok dekat gambar rajah tu. Okay. Dia kan daripada hijau ke biru tu. Dia list the right to use its IP, dia guna, dia bayar royalty balik. So, licensing ni orang kata orang selalu gunalah sebab nak senang dapat duit. Since a firm has already incurred the cost bila dia develop the IP tu So biasanya revenue akan dapat bila kita dapat fees tu Okay, ha, tu clear lah kat situ So apa basic issues yang nak kena ialah kena ada boundaries of the agreement Establish compensation rates, contohnya kita tengok lah McDonald, kita ada MACD, dah kena saman pun Orang yang guna MACD, M-C-D-E-E -E. Logo pun hampir sama, ada isu eh Tak boleh, macam nak buat KFC K-K-A-Y-E-F-C-E-E -E. Tak boleh sebab sebutan pun sama Dia ada antara orang kata right privileges and constraints Convict in the agreement ni pun ada bila licensing Specify the duration of the agreement You tak boleh pun katakan kalau you ambil uh, trademark tu You ambil trademark eh Contohnya you ambil trademark Disney kan You tak boleh tukar-tukar pun dia punya logo You kena ambil sedia ada Okay So ini basic issues in uh, licensing lah Okay specifying the agreements boundaries Okay Bila Uh, apa right and privileges are not being conveyed in the agreement Kena tengok compensation tu sendiri macam mana Okay, licensor wants to receive as much as compensation as possible And licensee want to pay as little Biasalah kita nak license dia tapi kita Kita ni, kita nak license dia, kita nak beli license dia Tapi kita nak bayar sikit je Dia pula confirm, kau nak pakai aku punya Kau kena lah bayar banyak So sama ada profitable or not You kena tengok apa percentages yang you dapat So ada kena tengok right privileges and constraints Kena tengok freedom untuk awak dapat information Adakah melibatkan third party or not Macam mana uh, license to uh, services dia macam mana Product and service quality dia macam mana Bila disagreement timbul macam mana dan berapa lama uh, agreement tu? Adakah dia short term ataupun low cost strategy? Uh, so kalau katakan sekejap sangat berbaloi tak dengan duit yang dibayar? Okay, so sesuai tak dengan investment yang telah dilaburkan untuk dapatkan license ni? Okay, uh, ni antara benda-benda. Did you need a break? Ataupun boleh saya sikit lagi je ni? Boleh saya sambung? Boleh madam. Boleh madam. Saya sambung je lah ya. Bukan senang nak dapat. Okay. Right. So advantages and disadvantages of international licensing. Kalau you tengok kat sana, you pun boleh nampak. Licensing carrying low financial risk. Yes. Okay. Market assessment pun. Um, macam mana nak cakap lah. Dia limit the market opportunities for both party. Okay, ini disadvantages dia lah Okay, tapi kalau dari segi uh, 
nak tahu kata mengenai sales potential tu licensing lah yang kata cara paling mudah kata beneficial for the the, the uh, for the home country okay uh, and licenses benefit through the opportunity to make and sell products services and services that has been successful in other international market so benda ni licensing ni boleh jadi sebab dah ada cerita story before okay So disadvantages macam saya cakap tadi, dia limited market opportunities and then other issues dari segi litigation, okay. Uh, macam mana nak uh, nak compete dengan future competitor, macam mana nak pastikan secrets yang ada tu uh, terjaga atau tidak, okay. Uh, and then bila expired, macam mana nak pastikan yang sebelum ni licensee kita ni yang pakai license kita ni macam mana dia expand tanpa melibatkan kita punya produk tu. Ha, kau dah ambil license kita tiba-tiba kau dah expired kau tak nak sambung and then suddenly you are, you, you are doing similar to our product. Ha, it's not fair lah kan. Okay so this is uh, this is another way of franchising pula. Ha, ini yang tadi yang awak sebut tu. Franchising allows the franchiser more control over the franchisee and provides more support from the franchiser to the franchisee then in the case of license or licensee relationship dia ada agreement yang allows the independent entrepreneur or organization kita call franchisee lah operate a business under the name of another call the franchiser in return for a fee juga so franchiser provide the franchisees with red marks Okay, operating system and well-known product reputation as well as continuous support services. Okay, tadi tu pattern, trademark yang ini more detail maknanya terus bagi produk tu. Contohnya ni lah yang kita tengok KFC, McDonald's, Starbucks. Okay, ha, dia bagi dengan support services lagi. Advertising bagi, training bagi, reservation services bagi, quality assurance program bagi. Semuanya lengkap. Ha, nak buka uh, 7-Eleven kena ada berapa juta dalam account untuk pastikan ni boleh buka. Ha, itu contohnya lah. Okay. So kita tengok basic issues in franchising. Franchise unique products and advantages operating procedures. Okay lah. Transferability to foreign location. Dia kena viable. Okay, sebab bila viable ni baru kita nampak, wow, okay. Of course lah, you pun teringin macam mana lah dia boleh buka satu satu KFC ya. Eh. Macam mana lah dia boleh buka session minyak ya. Yeah. Okay, banyak benda. Ingat senang yang nak buka, bukan senang ya. Yeah. So, mesti dah ada success story sampai you choose that particular franchise. Okay, so bila dia nak buka pun foreign investors must be in, in, must be interested in in an Entering into the agreement lah. Kalau tidak, dia akan jadi lebih sukar. Okay. So, advantages on international franchising. You ambil produk yang dah sedia ada. Of course lah, produk dengan sistem tu dah ada. Low cost expansion. Learning opportunities tu memang very well wide. Okay. Cuma nya shared revenue untung dikongsi. Lepas tu increase complexity dan quality control tu uh, kena kena jagalah sebab maintaining control over quality standard is also an issue. Sebabnya complicated. Okay. Lagi pula international franchising. Payah. Lepas tu nak sesuaikan pula dengan domestic punya rules and regulation. Lagi payah. Okay. Ini ialah specialized entry mode. Ha, kita nak pergi kepada yang dia. Okay. So kita nak kena faham apa dia sebenarnya. Sometimes you perasan tak kita ada nama hotel-hotel. Kan. Ha, kita ada Hilton. Kita ada Renault Zones. Okay. Mana datangnya uh, entry mode dia orang yang boleh masuk ni. So kita ada cara juga untuk masuk market. Haa. Uh, tanpa buat long term investment. Okay. So inilah dia cara dia. Kita panggil specialized entry modes. Okay. 
So use country, contract manufacturing untuk outsource most of all their manufacturing needs to other companies. Maknanya bila kita pakai contract manufacturing ni, uh, kita akan reduce the cost that firms need untuk uh, fokus pada physical production. Okay, sebab dia bagi semua kat orang tu, dia tak nak tahu pun. Okay, so bila guna approach ni, uh, the businesses can focus on on the value chain. Okay, dia orang pun akan benefit daripada location advantages generated by the host country production. So, bila dia orang buat macam ni, akan ada kesan sikit lah maknanya dia kena surrender control over the production process. Sebab dia bagi contract untuk manufacture. Aku tak nak tahu, aku outsource terus. Okay. Nah, ini India kata dia dia tak payah orang kata beria untuk bina company, uh, company kat tempat lain ke apa sebab dia dah outsource kan. Kalau management contract pula, dia more kepada managerial assistant, okay, technical expertise, specialized services to a second firm for some agreed upon time. Those were the days when I yang kata ni, kita akan hire expertise untuk uruskan certain things, okay, and in return for monetary compensation. For services, okay, firm akan dapat flat fee ataupun percentage of sales. Kalau katakan management contract ni, dia specify juga performance bonuses based on profitability, sales growth or quality measures. Okay, ini dia fokus pada manager assistant. Dia panggil team dia untuk lead untuk uruskan bisnes ni. Dia panggil technical expertise dia untuk pastikan ah, contohnya kalau kita F1, kita akan panggil orang-orang yang kata datangnya daripada negara luar untuk pastikan kita standard kita lah sama. Okay, right? Ataupun bila nak bina kereta tu, proton tu kita akan panggil expertise daripada Japan contohnya jurutera. Okay, so kita ada some certain of agreement lah kita tengok. Turnkey projects is contract under a which a firm agrees to fully design construct and equip a facility and then turn the project over to the purchaser when it is ready for operation. The turnkey contract may be for a fixed price in which case the firm makes it profit by keeping it cost below the fixed price. Or the contract may provide for payment on a close cost plus okay. So kalau kita nak tengok contoh-contoh uh, okay. Um, turn keep contract ni You akan tengok macam mana pembinaan-pembinaan yang melibatkan uh, Kalau tak silap saya dekat Mekah tu pun Tower tu pun is a turn key project lah Bila dah siap serahkan balik Okay tower jam tu Okay so banyak lagi banyak lagi KLCC ke adakah KLCC is a turn key project uh, Ni BOT ni apa tu BOT Okay BOT ialah firm builds a facility, operates it. Lepas tu dia transfer ownership of the project to some other party. Okay. Bila dia buat approach yang macam ni, contractor dia profit from the operation and ownership of the project for some period of time. However, dia also akan best all the financial risk associated with owning and operating during this period. Maknanya dia akan transfer bila dia nak transfer Okay tapi sam sampai dia nak transfer tu Dia akan bear with the cost lah Okay Ini ialah Specialized entry mode Kalau FDI FDI pun ada tiga ha, Sikit lagi, sikit lagi Okay sabar eh Hari ni memang kita ha, Keras kentang lah kat depan slide ni ha, Mendengar lah saya baby Okay So, however, many firms, okay, there are three methods. Satu, FDI melalui Greenfield Strategy, okay, ataupun building new facility. Nombor dua, acquisition. Kita buying existing asset in a foreign country. Call the acquisition strategy or the brownfield strategy. Okay, Greenfield, bina baru. Ni FDI, eh, kita terus direct investment dekat negara tu, dekat home, host country. Kita beli baru facility, kita panggil greenfield. Kalau kita buying existing asset, kilang dah sedia ada. Kita panggil tu brownfield strategy. Ataupun kita JV je lah. Okay, ha, tak payah susah-susah. Okay. Ha, 
apa benefit dia? Of course lah bila FDI ni kita increase control kita profit potential local factories kita uh, dekat host country tu uh, akan nak kata ada connection lah sebab more reliable supply, faster service, better communication dengan suppliers okay tapi FDI ni pun exposes the firm contohnya bila kilang-kilang Malaysia ni banyak dekat China Haa bila kena pandemik memang terus stop ekonomi kita sekejap Okay Haa uh, Selain daripada ekonomi political yes Okay operating complexity Okay Haa uh, dia masalahnya bila kita tak dapat nak ada control insurance pun Risk political risk insurance Okay tiba-tiba tak boleh ada itu tak boleh ada ni Ha, dan bila firm pilih FDI ni dia kena faham yang dia kena terima bahawa standard challenges of managing, operating and financing ni memang tahap level dia tinggi sikit. Bukan sikit, banyak. Okay. Ha, ni Greenfield lah bila, bila beli baru. Okay, bila bina baru sorry. Select the most useful site, construct modern facilities akan tengok dengan economic development incentive start with a clean slate okey biasalah sebab kita bina baru kan kita tahulah apa yang kita nak okey <coughs> ah maknanya modern up to date facilities okey tapi mampu ke tidak okey and firm also can acclimate itself for the new business culture kalau dia punya disadvantages ah memang takes time and patience lah okey ah so ini normal okey maybe stigmatized as a foreign firm Okay, sampai bila-bila kita tahu yang Legoland bukan kita punya. Okay. Kalau katakan kita tengok acquisition strategy. Okay, kita control over the firm's resources sebab kita ambil existing firm kan. Right, brownfield strategy ni. Okay, ha, dia generates immediate revenue sebab kita tak payah fikir daripada awal nak kena ni. ni. Okay. So dia advantages ialah dia dah ada liability, dia dah ada hutang dah, dah ada cerita problem dia sedia ada. Okay. And join ventures, join own separate firms ataupun promote a joint venture maknanya two or more firms agree to work together and create a jointly own separate firm to promote their mutual interest. The number of such arrangement adalah based on um, kata rapid changes in technology, uh, telecommunication and government policies outstrip the ability to international firms untuk lebih um, kata dapat opportunity untuk diorang ber, berdagang lah in a way. Okay so that's it kot. Uh, dah sampai pun habisnya. Dah. Dah tak ada pun. Ha, okay. So masih lagi kamera saya tak boleh detect. Alright. So kita tengok. Last. So is there any questions? Is there any question? No, Madam. Okay, kalau tak ada question. I will end it here.